Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I am your host, Zach Peterson. I'm a technical consultant for Altium. And today we're gonna to be talking about specific types of stack ups that are used in HDI PCBs. Now on one of our recent videos that just came out about PCB designer job interviews and how to answer the questions you might get during PCB design job interviews, we actually got a great question from one of our viewers who asked about a specific type of HDI stack up. Now I was just mentioning this type of stack up in the video just kind of as a joke. However, HDI stack ups I think can be a little confusing. So we're gonna go over this one type of stack up and some related stack ups today. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first, before we get started, let's look at the viewer question from our friend Fetty Mockney. Fetty Mockney writes, any information about two plus n plus two stack up? Yes, actually, I am going to give you that information on two plus n plus two stack ups. So two plus n plus two stack ups are a specific type of HDI PCB stack up. Now, sometimes when we talk about HDI and we talk about routing through micro vias and what the stack up needs to be, we're a bit overly generic and we aren't really specific as we need to be for the different types of HDI PCB stack ups. In fact, the IPC standards have standardized different types of PCB stack ups based on number one, how the vias are placed and routed between different layers. And then number two, what the manufacturing process is to actually build up the stack up uh, for that PCB. Okay, so a two plus N plus two stack up. This is what we wanna look at. So if we start kind of drawing out our layers in the PCB, uh, what we're gonna do is kind of just draw each of these layers like this. What I've done here is I've drawn uh, basically two dielectrics and then a thicker layer here in the middle and then I've got another two dielectrics on the bottom. Now in a two plus N plus two stack up, we essentially have a layer on the top where we do micro via routing uh, from the surface to the next layer and then we have another layer below that where we do micro via routing. And you can stack these vias if you like. And we've talked about this uh, a little bit in an earlier video on micro via reliability. Um, so these vias can be stacked. However, if you do that, you do need to plate the interior of this via. Uh, and then on this inner layer, you will have a buried via like this. And then this arrangement up here on the top essentially repeats itself down here on the bottom. So you have another micro via like this, obviously inverted. And then if you're gonna stack it, it also gets filled and plated over. And then we have our micro via on the bottom coming out to the surface layer. Here, we only have this buried via spanning between uh, basically just these two layers. However, we could have additional layers in here, essentially like this, if you like, and then this buried via could then also make connections to these internal layers. So you basically do all of your HDI routing on these outer layers, and then maybe you have planes on these layers, maybe you have planes here, uh, maybe you have signals, whatever it needs to be. We also then balance the stack up by essentially inverting it on the bottom half, and then we do the same kind of thing. If we have you know plane here, we would wanna have plane here, and, and so on and so forth. This is essentially what a two plus N plus two stack up is. So here we have two, one, two copper layers. Here we've got another two, so one, two copper layers. And then here we just have N, meaning we could really have any number of layers that we like spanning this middle section between uh, the top set of microvias and the bottom set of microvias. This uh, particular stack up is, uh, is so named because it's actually mentioning the number of sequential build up uh, operations that are needed to construct this layer stack. When this layer stack is constructed, it's not just the case where you basically do each layer of processing and then keep adding on and keep adding on like you would with a normal PCB. What you actually do is you construct this inner stack up and then you construct each of these pieces with the HDI routing individually. And then these are all laminated together uh, as your final stack up. So here, what you would typically have is like pre-preg, you have another pre-preg, and then here you could have alternating core, pre-preg, core, 
and then maybe pre-preg and pre-preg. And this is essentially it. This is the stack up. This is essentially just named based on the number of lamination steps and not necessarily the number of layers or the number of pre-preg sheets that you're spanning here. However, uh, they are coincident here in this, uh, this layer stack that I've drawn. Fabricators that do HDI PCB manufacturing, uh, they will let you know or they will be able to show you kind of their standard HDI PCBs that they can create. Here, we've just shown two plus N plus two, but this could be, let's say a three plus N plus three. So let's say I fill this in and plate it over. And then instead of all this, I have another layer up here. And then I can have, again, micro vias coming in and basically going like this. So if I do this, this would be a three plus N. And then here we would wanna have plus three. So we would do this same thing that we did up here down here on the bottom, because again, we try and keep these layers balanced. There's also four plus N plus four and you know, really so on and so forth. And it really just depends on the number of layers that you want, the layer thicknesses that you need to have, how much routing density you need, all of those types of factors that you would normally consider when you're designing a PCB stack up. They all apply here as well. It's just that this is all pretty much standardized. Now, the way that I've drawn this here, I've drawn these all as being stacked. However, they don't have to be stacked. And in fact, with this arrangement of three microvias like this, you actually would not want to stack those unless your fabricator can demonstrate that they can uh, put this through reflow reliably. So one of the things that happens with uh, microvias or that was has been known to happen for the last 12 years or so is that uh, stacked microvias like this could fail during reflow. And then eventually when the layer stack cools down, the crack that arises here or here or here, wherever that joint is, that crack can then allow the copper to reconnect when the board cools down after reflow. And so it looks like there isn't a defect. However, later if the board heats up and then the prepregs and core all expand, that would then lift the copper up and then would cause the defect to reappear again. So the board could fail mid operation when it's put into the field. For that reason, you may see this drawn like this However, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can always stack these microvias like this when you're actually creating one of these stack ups. Typically what you would do is instead of drawing it like this, uh, you may draw it something like this, where you basically have a via over here, it comes in and then it's like this and that's the top layer. Kind of complete this with our dielectric and then you'll route off from the bottom of this over to the next pad for the next microvia and so on and so forth. So these uh, microvias and then even the buried via are actually staggered from each other. So they're offset from each other inside of the PCB stack up. So that's called staggered microvias. And you may see a drawing like that that actually staggers all of this stuff kind of in a stair step as you go through, through the layer stack. So just keep that in mind just because you see it drawn like this doesn't necessarily mean that someone is telling you with certainty that we can reliably fabricate this and that it's always gonna survive in the field. So that's just one of those points where if you do want to stack microvias like that, you should actually talk to the fabricator and see what they recommend as far as the number of stacks that you can do. So typically two is okay, basically like from, a, from here to here. If you go above two, it starts to get tricky. Um, that's actually stated in the original IPC microvia uh, reliability warning. And we'll link to an article in the description on Altium's blog that actually details the original warning from IPC. And you can go ahead and read about that and learn all about microvia reliability. So what else can we do with this layer stack? Well, you can actually have another more advanced type of HDI PCB stack up that doesn't use this buried via. So what you can actually do is you can actually have these buried vias uh, going all the way through the stack up, uh, basically like this, and touching every single layer. So this is called any layer interconnect or every layer interconnect. And basically 
You're just filling in all of these vias and stacking them on top of each other and reaching through the entire layer stack. Now, this is another point where, again, reliability matters here. If these uh, aspect ratios are not correct, they're gonna be at greater danger of failing. Uh, essentially, if they're too large, they're gonna be at, at danger of failing. So in general, you would like to keep this microvia aspect ratio at less than one. And you'll see different recommendations from different people. Less than one is kind of a good, little, you know, little loose upper limit. I've seen this go down to, to less than 0.8, and then I've seen it go down as far as less than 0.6. This is another point where you should actually ask your fabricator what they recommend. Just make sure to email them and tell them, hey, we think we need, you know, let's say we need 12 layers. Just tell them, we think we need 12 layers. We want to do every layer interconnect. How should we build the stack up? And they'll send you back some options and tell you how you can route it. And that's basically what you need. They'll give you the, uh, they should give you the, at least the thicknesses. Then once you know the thicknesses, you can then determine things like what trace width do I need? What pitch of uh, BGA components can, can I support? And all of this other stuff that you would normally do in HDI routing. Hopefully that answers the question. What is a two plus N plus two stack up? Just keep this in mind. What I've shown here is actually not a three plus N plus three, but two plus N plus two, as you may remember from the original part of the video. However, keep this kind of naming convention in mind, because if you ever see four plus N plus four or something like that in a guideline or on somebody's website, this is basically what that means. All right, everybody, so definitely, if you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section. We love getting your questions and comments. And definitely on this stuff, you definitely gotta call your fabricator, folks. Yeah.